So, um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to first day class. And yeah, so first and foremost, um, what is first aid inside your mind? Um, so first and foremost, first aid as a first aid definition. First aid definition is uh the first help that is given to a casualty before the arrival of any ambulance or doctor or any paramedic or any qualified medical personnel so what does it mean it means that if there's a casualty a casualty is normally referred as an injured person or a person that is injured okay never mind so uh when you see someone who is injured and uh you go ahead and help him it's basically uh, what you do as a senior member, lah. you give first help to the person before the arrival of any ambulance or any doctor or any paramedic. Uh, paramedic is uh, the person who works as an emergency agent behind the ambulance. I think so. Uh, no, uh, never mind. So, um, this first aid definition is very important and we require all of you guys, all of the member, to memorize it if you could. Okay, so comes objective uh objectives of first aid first aid so the first objective is to preserve life as you may know from the english it's very simple preserve life means that um to like make sure he don't die lah that's all um then the second one is to limit the worsening of the condition um uh, where are anyone else not here Anyone else? Okay, or Ina. Okay, as I was saying, as I was saying, uh, the second objective is to limit the worsening of condition. Basically, you don't want the person to injure more. Like maybe he pata a hand already. You don't want him to pata a second leg or a second hand. So, uh, as a central member, you should make sure that you don't accidentally injure him more or like injured her more. Um, the third objective is to promote recovery. Promote recovery is where like the person is injured and then you give some certain medication or a certain uh, first aid towards the person. And then you aid the person, you help the person, you help the person's body or so-called to promote recovery. Uh, what, do you, what does it mean by promote recovery? Just in case you guys don't know, is to help the body recover, recover much more easier. Okay, everyone understand? Uh, okay. So, come to the second slide. Say priority. So, when an accident happened, like maybe in a highway or some sort, when an accident happened, you need to access, uh, access the situation calmly and quick and confident. You don't go and say, ah, shit, la, jelak, la. What, how, how to do, how to do? Uh, 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 oh no, oh no, how to do, how to do? No, as a senior first aider, you should uh, access the situation calmly. You don't go inside and panic. Otherwise, you make other people panic also, and then everyone will go haywire. And then you should also access the situation quick. Um, basically, uh, after you have become a senior, uh, as a senior qualified member, you can go for duties. And then if you go for duties, you, uh, you go for more duties and more more duties you can um you can how do you say you'll get experience more lah, and then you guys will uh, start uh you guys will start how do you say assessing the situation much more quickly and much more steady much more steady as they may refer steady and then also you should access the situation confidently um you don't doubt yourself you don't like hmm what should i do should i do this or should i do that um you your mind should be clear when you are accessing a situation. Your mind should be like, okay, after this, I do this. After this, I do this. After this, I do this. Don't go like, um, should I do this or that? Should I do this or that? That that will help. Okay? So, comes for the first aid priority. A second one is to protect uh, from any danger or any risk. This priority includes you yourself. You yourself, uh, you should protect yourself first before you, prof you protect the casualty. For example, maybe like, uh uh how do you say uh fire just went up um then the uh the house or so-called the place it's engulfed in flame 
and then the whole place is in flame and everything is super super dangerous you don't rush inside and you go help uh, okay uh, anyways as i say as i was saying so protect from danger and risk is to protect um you and the casualty from any danger or risk possible at the situation for example um when you are in a petrol petrol uh petrol station maybe the petroleum start leaking out i don't know why lah maybe they start leaking out and then the gas is the petroleum gas is all over the place then everyone starts fainting because of lack of oxygen and then maybe uh because lack of engines people start fainting then maybe accident happen or so you should first think of whether you should go inside the situation first like is the situation safe for you to go inside later uh, you go inside uh, then the whole situation go haywire you injure yourself then people need to save you some more you only give my fun to people else and uh, someone else uh. okay so um protect danger from uh casualty you may refer as maybe like uh accident happen in the middle of road you should like uh bring the casualty to the side of the road uh so that the casualty don't get ran over another car and worsen the case lah okay so comes the third priority the third priority is to prevent cross infection um what do i mean by prevent cross infection uh some in some kind of virus any kind of virus lah can actually um pass through blood uh pass through like humanly fluid such as blood or such as sli uh, saliva or sweat or any sort of like humanly fluids lah so if you expose yourself to that humanly fluid you may get the virus also such as hiv or how you say uh such as hiv aids and all sorts of stuff you don't want to get yourself uh into so how do you prevent cross infection uh for now i will give a brief idea you should wear glove and also set, sterilize your hand um members please close your mic thank you uh yeah so the fourth priority is to comfort and reassure the casualty what do i mean by this you don't uh give more like give more like uh anxiety to the patient you don't go like oh sh shit hello you're, you're late cannot help really you're late confirm pata already no more already you don't do this you go you go you go to the casualty you say uh it's okay it's okay everything will be okay everything will be fine you should comfort the casualty you cannot like give like the casualty more anxious or stress otherwise uh the, the uh, situation uh become worse and worse and then until we cannot control so moving on access the casualty identify injuries and natural illness so after you completed every four of this you should um come over to the casualty and then see what does the casualty what kind of injuries does the casualty have um see lah, like maybe his hand like see take take not take off his shirt but agak agak just see maybe like uh is there bleeding is there a big wound uh is there like a broken bone and so on so you must identify the injury clearly and also know what you're doing you don't you don't go ah uh, like suddenly there's a wound here and then it's like eh this is not a wound this is a broken bone no you don't do this kind of stuff you access and identify the injury clearly and also um clearly and sharp ah you can say that then um give early treatment to the most serious condition first what do i mean by this uh, i'll explain to you later then uh, comes the last one arrange appropriate help and keeping note or making report um once like you stop bleeding and then uh stop bleeding you give first aid you do everything ready the person uh, the casualty is breathing again everything is stabilized already everything good already 
Ah, uh, then you give, you start. Ah, uh, how do you say? You call ambulance. You go with the ambulance, and then, uh, you make notes. This one no need lah. Just know that after everything is done, call ambulance. Arrange for appropriate help. Okay, so understand any questions? No. Okay. Um. Members, please open your mic when you want to ask question. Cause I cannot move back. I mean, move uh, move back to the chat and see the question. Okay, triage. What is triage? Triage is um how do you say? It's a level of how bad the casualty is currently. Like, for example, yeah, uh, in the game, right? You have ranking, right? Uh, you have like in ML, you have. Uh, maybe diamond, platinum, gold, and then the more higher you are, the how do you say, the more important, the more important you need to like access the casualty first. So triage is something like this. Triage is like triage is like uh the level of uh hurt the casualty is in now. So green triage, uh, so called minor. Uh. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So, um, green, try it. I give you an example, lah. Okay, maybe a lao a po or a lao a pe, a uncle or a lady, fall down for a stairs, but he just fall only. He can still walk, and then he can still talk to you. He can still curse the stairs for letting him fall. Yeah, this one is what you call minor injury. Basically, he can still walk, and also uh, there's no life-threatening in injury. Uh, the second one is yellow triage. Wait, okay, okay. Uh, I'll give you more example for green triage, lah. Okay, so uh, for example, maybe you fall down, and then the wound is very, very big. Uh, but not as big as pouring out lah. Uh, it's just bleeding, but it's not as much as you thought it will be. It's just bleeding, and then you cover up the wound, you sterilize the wound, you how do you say you clean the wound already, and the wound okay okay already. This is what you call a green triage. I'm sorry. Okay, so come down, coming down, yellow. Yellow triage is delayed. Uh, what do you mean by delayed? It's like, um, even though uh, the casualty is in danger, he is not that danger. Okay, uh, for example, maybe, uh, maybe, 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 maybe basketball, lah, okay? You play basketball, play, 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 suddenly, oh, jalat, patah already, you're late. But you can still talk, you can still breathe, you can still, like, uh, say a lot of curse word. Walau, why my leg patah? Ah, sake, aduhai. Macam dah, macam mana you die already, right? But actually, this is what you call a yellow triage. Uh, basically, the person is not in that danger, but he needs surgery later. Uh, in the future. Uh, later some while lah. So, uh, second, maybe okay. I'll give you another example lah. Wait ah, uh, sorry ah. Uh. Sorry, ah, uh, uh. Okay, okay. So, yellow triage. One more example. Um, let's say yellow triage. Let's say, let's say, um, let's say, 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 let's uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yellow triage. Ah, uh, wait. Ah, uh, find example for you guys. Let me find my example. 
Oh no, no example for you guys. Um, okay. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I'll, uh, if I think of it, I'll tell you like the example. Uh. Okay, moving on. Wait, wait, try it. This is like the most urgent really one. This is the type of casualty you need to call ambulance immediately and then send him to the hospital immediately as soon as possible. And um, how do you like differentiate whether this is a red triage or a yellow triage? If the person, uh, if the casualty is a red triage, then he cannot breathe, he cannot walk, and then his vital sign is abnormal. What do you mean by vital sign? Um, later, someone else will explain to you. For now, just know that basically his body is not functioning well. He cannot talk. Uh, he cannot walk. He cannot breathe. Basically, he, he may die any second now. So, let me give you an example. Car bang. Bang! Zoom. Then, uh, the driver, uh, head bleeding, and then, uh, hand pata, uh, stomach bleeding also. Yeah. And then, when you pull him out of the car, the, uh, the person is not breathing already. Then, he doesn't, he doesn't respond to you at all. This one is what you call a red triage. He needs immediately immediate transfer to the hospital as soon as possible. Otherwise, he may die. Uh, okay. Uh, I have an example here. Wait. Uh, e Wait, this is not an example. Oof, I got scammed. Never mind. So, one more example of triage. Hmm. Okay, say lah. Maybe uh, someone, uh, maybe your friend, uh, not your friend, this is dark, if it's your friend. Maybe someone, some stranger you don't know. He, he jumped from the uh, like 13th, uh, 13th floor. He don't, want, he don't want to leave already. Or maybe some someone pull a prank on him, just push, push him. Oh no, I push you. Ah, uh, This kind of stuff. When he fell already, confirm one. Uh, how do you say? Confirm he he memang injured very bad really, really one. So you go up to him. If he's not basically he's not breathing, then uh you do uh if he's not breathing, you do CPR first. You start CPR. CPR I'll teach you later. But if he is how do you say? Maybe he's uh he hand pata already. And then he pata right. His bone come up. Then start bleeding a lot. What you do? Uh, not what you do. His his hands start bleeding a lot. Then he oh, his bone bata his hand bata already. And then he's not bleeding. Yeah, this kind of stuff. Uh, you need to do your best to stabilize him first. What do I mean? Stabilize him. You need to do CPR. Make sure that he's breathing, and then call ambulance in the meanwhile. Once the ambulance is here, send him directly to the uh directly to the hospital. Cause this kind of guy can die anytime soon, and you don't want them to die. Because this is a central member. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. So, uh, black, no life sign, dead. You know one lah. Maybe like, uh, how do you say? Maybe those kind of incident. You know that he can he's he memang die already one. No uh, no breathing, no more breathing. Uh, no more, no more pulse. He's not responding to you anymore. Um, yeah, like this. Then. He has basically he has no sign of life. He's dead. Um, then you can access him. You, you can how you say you can give him a labor. Uh, black triage. Uh, what? Why do we use triage? Okay, give you an example lah. Maybe a tsunami. Boom. <laughs> brush up. Uh, the tsunami. How do you say? Wash. Wash the beach. And then everyone's like injured lah. It's like thousands and mil uh, millions of casualties on the beach. And then what uh what can you do? I mean maybe you have a time uh, you have a team of four only. What can you do? You go to every casualty, not to every casualty lah. You go as much casualty as you can, and then you give them this kind of triage. You treat the person with the red triage first. Then only comes yellow, only only comes green, and on uh the black no need to treat really one. This is extreme condition only you give triage if not right maybe like an accident and then the casualty is like one or two only you can handle then you handle the casualty you don't you don't you don't say that ah oh, he's dead he's dead already i don't handle i don't care anymore he's dead already you don't do this kind of stuff 
this kind of stuff will get you into court and then you don't want that. Um, yeah, triage is when extreme condition, there's a lot of casualty. I mean, like a lot, a lot of casualty. And then you don't, you doesn't have the manpower to help every casualty, but you still, you still try lah. But uh, triage is to prioritize the casualty that is more needed in care first. Uh, yeah. Later, you guys will have like, you guys will have quizzes about triage lah. Then see you guys can answer or not lah. Okay. Minimizing cross infection. So I say already right. One of the first set objective. So how do you minimize cross infection? Oh yeah. Um, cross infection is like maybe an open wound, and then your hand you got wound already, right? Then you go touch the casualty's open wound. Then confirm lah, your his blood and your blood mixed together. Jose, I mean like, congrats, yay, you're pregnant. That's kidding. Uh, it's high risk lah, very very high risk. So what you do is you need to prevent, uh, minimize cross infection. You cannot prevent it hundred percent. But you need to minimize it as much as you can. Like for now, COVID nineteen, right? Yeah, you see, cough, uh, saliva, cough can spread the virus. So that the, uh, so this is like a high risk for the first line, first liner la. They should they minimize cross infection so that they can like protect themselves and also their families. And yeah, this is like why is what this is why cross infection is like so important. Okay, back to the point. What, uh, how do you minimize cross infection? First, you wash your hand. Um, in like in a lot of drama, a lot of Korean drama, uh, those kind of doctor, right? Like good doctor, those kind of like doctor. You see surgeons are uh, they before they go inside surgery to confirm wash their hand, kau kau, right? They wash their hand like super super hard. So it's, uh, wash 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 wash. Then. Super professional, go to give to the nurse and wear the glove for them. This is, is um, wash your hand, as you may know, can kill off the bacteria on your hand and it can save, I just say no, not safe, lah. it can minimize the risk of getting a virus for the casualty and you too. Because once you wash your hand, uh, the bacteria gone already, right? Then your hand is so called clean because your hand could never be clean 100%. Your hand is so called clean, then uh, you can minimize the cross infection and the risk much smaller. Then the second step, wear gloves. Why wear gloves? Oh, yeah, you guys know one lah. Wear gloves can uh how do you say? It's like a condom for your hand lah. Uh, um, basically it protects your hand and also uh yeah protects your hand lah. Uh, comes to the third point, cover cuts and grease uh on your hand with waterproof dressing. What do I mean? Uh, what does this point mean? Okay, example, right? Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, when pulling pulling a casualty out of a accident or something, you accidentally cut yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh no, shit! My thumb, wound radio. What do I do? Uh, before you access the casualty, you need to uh undergo these steps, lah. And then the third step, your hand got wound already, right? Your thumb got wound already, right? You need to wear gloves. And uh, so that uh, so that yeah, your blood doesn't mix with the casualty blood. Yeah. <laughs> um. What if you cannot find glove? Hmm? What if you cannot find glove? You can find. You can use all sorts of like waterproof dressing. What do you mean by waterproof dressing? You use plastic. Also can you use um maybe. Um, how do you say a waterproof uh, rain jacket if you cannot find plastic or glove lah, uh, glove will still be your main choice still, um, so what I want to say is for this point be smart um, use stuff you can find from the surrounding but don't use a dirty one lah, of course you don't go to longkang hey go plastic ah, take this plastic and use no 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 no. you don't do that you die, you die even faster you see you just even faster I'm just kidding so yeah, what I, what I mean was um, you should protect yourself and also the casualty by minim minimizing cross-infection by covering your wound with waterproof dressing. Okay? All right, come the fourth point. Dispose and throw always. What do you mean? Uh, what do you mean by this? Okay, 
if you go for duty right you normally will use a lot of like um like a lot of like bandages a lot of like wool a lot of like stuff to like clean the wound and also apply iodine so this kind of stuff right you don't throw simply on the street you know later some uh, later someone uh, accidentally or maybe some very unlucky cleaner uh, ex- uh, accidentally pick up your stuff without uh, considering that it's very risky then he could not the virus or oh, how so what you must do is uh, after every duty or after any kind of like um, any kind of like first aiding you must throw whatever stuff that you use safely uh into the garbage lah. you don't let people pick up the trash for you you pick up your own trash be responsible be a good citizen okay come the fifth point do not approach the wound with a bare hand i tell you already right the wound very the wound like got open wound already bleeding already you can see meat already you can see the muscle and all already you don't go wow this is what already ah huh? this is uh those kind of from four senior, wow, biology, I learned already. Uh, this one is what, 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 what. You touch the wound on your bare hand, uh, you die already, I tell you. <laughs> so, basically, do not approach the wound with bare hand. Wash your hand, wear gloves, or any kind of safety equipment, and then only you access the wound. Otherwise, you're going to be in big risk. Very, very big risk. Later, you go touch the wound, uh, you go, uh, I don't know, pick your nose, or go pick your ear. Ah, uh, mati already, I tell you. <laughs> Big risk lah, not mati lah. You don't like directly touch the blood. You go, oh! No, never mind. <laughs> That's awkward. Uh, okay, I'm being overdramatic. Okay, last point. Do not breathe, cause sneeze over a wound. Uh, COVID-19, no? You got wound, right? <laughs> oh. GG ready, no? Uh, lawyer, uh, if he goes to you, uh, lawyer come find you, you mati ready, no? Uh, go inside jail, makan curry nasi. Uh, nasi curry. Uh, nasi curry. Very nice, I'll tell you. Uh, I don't know, actually. So, do not breathe cause or sneeze over a wound. Because when you breathe, you cough and you sneeze over the wound. Uh, uh, you, how do you say? You split saliva to the wound and it's very disgusting and it's very risky. So, yeah. Do not breathe cause or sneeze over a wound. So, repeat. Uh. First, wash hand. Second, wear glove. Then, uh, third, throw every, uh, everything that you have used yourself. Don't let people pick up your rubbish. The other three points is just for your own notice. Like, maybe you got wound, maybe you got, uh, basically, uh, like, situation or example for you guys to know so that it minimizes cross-infection. So, repeat, uh, wash hand, wear glove, dispose, and throw always. Um, as you can see, shelf container. This one, uh, biohazard bag, shelf container, biohazard bag. Um, normally used for like, um, um, humanly stuff, la. How do you say humanly stuff? Like, you see, if you if you have went, went to a hospital before, you know one, la. You see this kind of bag and this kind of container before one. Uh, school maybe they give you an injection and they, they also bring out this kind of stuff, right? Because this is where the professionals or uh the person in charge will take care of and then this is like a classification of stuff biohazard bag is where you con- uh you used to how to say contain uh bandages with that has blood already and then maybe you use uh basically biohazard bag is to contain any sorts of um stuff that involves Bloods or saliva. This is a brief explanation only. There's actually a lot of uses, but yeah, this is just a brief explanation. Shelf container is like uh, maybe cause injection. They inject already, right? Then they cannot oh, they cannot use the injection again. One, they need to throw the needle point into this kind of shelf container. This kind of stuff you do want to use your hand. Go inside. What is inside? Ah, uh, why you go inside? Right, come back. Ah, uh, your hand don't know much. Like how already one all cuts, cause inside the container. There's gonna be a lot of sharp objects such as needle points. It's gonna be uh maybe glass shards. Any basically inside this container, it's gonna be very very risky and very very dangerous for you. Since uh since there's a lot of sharp objects inside, as you can see from the main sharp container. 
Okay. Maybe a car crash. Pam. Then you come down and help. What do you do? You do, confirm you guys don't know, right? Okay, this is what you do. Primary is away. VRABC. VRABC is um VRABC is primary survey. And I believe that most of you guys have learned it already. If your senior could teach you, this is like the most basic, basic stuff and the most important stuff in like the whole whole first aid uh mm -hmm. field. Danger. V R A B C R we proceed with danger first. So what is danger? Danger is you like uh, I gave you the example before you right. Danger is like maybe the casualties on the road, highway, the car is like flying for 30 kilometers per hour stuff. You must like remove the danger first. Uh remove the casualty from the danger. And also an example of danger is like maybe the casualty has like um for for any reason like maybe like he banged he, he banged the car already then for any reason the safety belt the safety belt like uh tie his neck already and then it's like choking him you should also remove that danger also so that you know the person don't choke death like, obviously so danger can be on the casualty and it can be on the uh the environment also you must remove the danger this danger to in order to protect you yourself and also the casualty how do you check for danger? Look up, look down, look F, look right, uh, look, listen, feel, smell. I repeat, look up, look down, look left, look right. You see your whole environment. Okay? Then you look, you listen, you feel, and you smell. Uh, listen. For example, what do you listen to? Maybe gas leak. Maybe uh bank car already then the car who bank uh the car who bank the other car is maybe like a gas car then the gas is starting to leak then you should uh what do you do in this situation you should try your best to remove the casualty as soon as possible away from the situation where you don't uh listen where you don't like where you think it's safe not think it's safe you can Assure the situation is safe. So this is an example for what you listen to, what you feel. Maybe you feel that maybe the environment you go inside that go inside the situation. Oh, eh, why is it so hot? One ah, you, wow, this is hotter than Malaysia. You know, this is when the situation is hotter than you, uh, norm, normal that hotter than the normal environment, uh, temperature. This may means that something somewhere is burning. So, if you feel that something is super super hot, or do you feel like irritating? Irritating is like itchy la on your in your skin. This is where the situation is very dangerous. Uh, why would I say itchy? Maybe uh a chemical spill already. Then the chemical release, uh the chemical gas, and then the chemical gas uh feel, makes like your whole body itchy itchy uh, ah. Yeah, this is what you feel for smell. Um, smell gasoline. Yeah, you feel gasoline. Oh. No, like a lot of drama, gasoline, when you light, uh, light a fire, boom, you no more, casualty no more, everything is clear. You don't even have to access that situation anymore. Yeah, just kidding. Okay, we're moving on. D, finish with you, right? Respond. Uh, how do you check for respond? You tap on a casualty shoulder. Um, wait, uh, eh, sorry. Coming back, coming back. Hello. Okay. Uh, you tap for the casualty shoulder. You tap on the casualty shoulder, I know tap on somewhere else, lah. Uh, I know you guys naughty, naughty. So you tap on the shoulder, and then you ask, "Uh, are you okay? Can you hear me, sir?" And then, um, if uh, if the casualty respond you like, "Oh, wala, why you touch me?" Ah, uh, this one okay, ready, lor. Then you can ask the casualty to move himself, lor. Then you can move on to move on to someone else. But if the person is not, uh. If the person is not like responding to you, even though you shout so goddamn loud already, shout until you now your ama you also can hear, then the person still cannot uh, respond to you or cannot hear. Uh, normally, how do they give response? They go like, uh, uh, what la? This kind of stuff. Yeah, if they talk to you, you can hear it. They talk to you already. Yeah, this is what you call a response. Uh, so called a brief explanation of response la. If the person doesn't like, you can see that he's not. Responding at all, 
he faints already. His eyes is closed. He doesn't even like talk to you. He, even though he's still brief, he don't talk to you. He close his eyes, and then he's basically faint, as you can see. Then yeah, this is no response. So you check for response. If the person has response, then you can uh proceed to the other stuff. Lah. If the person doesn't have response, you proceed to DRA. A airway. Airway is basically the throat lah. Uh, the throat here. Uh, the throat here, if any from trees here, they may know it as also phagus or trachea. And yeah, so the airway is important for breeding and also, uh, yeah, mainly for breeding. Lah. This is the most important and crucial stuff in uh, like this whole first aiding stuff. So uh, what you do is you open the casualty mouth. You open lah, uh, very gently, very... Sub, uh, you open the airway, you open the casualty mouth and you look for obstruction. If like there is uh yeah, there is like rock inside for some reason or any fish ball inside that you can see, you use your pinky, it may it may look disgusting, but you use your pinky, go you go inside and then you dig the thing out if you can. And then if you cannot, then uh, we will teach you more yeah, later la. Uh, okay so if the airway is clear as you can see uh, if the airway is clear you will know one because you can see the whole throat it's, it may be disgusting but yeah you can see the airway is clear then after the airway is clear you hit till chin leaf um, hit till chin leaf this is a uh, very important stuff but because of this is an online teaching I cannot teach you I cannot like give you a practical example of what does it mean by head chin leaf but head to chin leaf is a way that you tip the head and then you lift the chin and then after you head to chin leaf uh a hey, how do you say the head will maintain the whole throat will maintain a straight position so that uh air can flow in and flow out very easily so this is why you need to head to chin leaf okay moving on D R A B C B breathing um, what do you do is actually the IABC this primary survey is actually uh involved very much in practical, but due to its online teaching, I cannot show you too much, and also I cannot demonstrate it to you too much. And yeah, so I'll just explain briefly to you breathing. What you do is you uh you go you how do you say you approach the casualties. Um, you approach the casualty, the place between the mouth and your nose, and then you see lah. Uh, this is very hard to explain. As long okay, as long as you stick your head, not stick your head to it. You, um, how do you say? You approach, you approach uh the casualty, and then the place between the mouth and the nose, and then. You listen for any breathing or you listen for any mumbling words. What do I mean by mumbling words? Uh, maybe the casualty is very, very, very weak. And I check for response. He doesn't give you any response, but actually he is. But you cannot hear. It's very, 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 very soft. Maybe it's like uh, ASMR. Uh, you never know, right? So you need to, uh, how do you say? Very, you, should, you should listen for any mumbling words or any breathing. You can listen to your breathing also, all right? You can hear. Yeah, you can listen to your breathing or so on. So, in the meanwhile, listening for breathing, you can uh, look at the abdomen. What do you mean? Uh, where's the abdomen? The abdomen is somewhere near uh, your chest and your stomach. It's somewhere between your chest and your stomach. And then, okay, now I need you guys to like breathe naturally. You can see that your chest, night and through, night and through, right? You guys, you know that your chest, your chest will uh, rise up and then go back down, rise up, go back down. This is a proof of, a solid proof that the casualty is breeding. So, um, in the meanwhile, checking for breeding, you should also check for pulse. How do you check for pulse? You go for the neck. You go for the neck, and then uh, you check, lah. You uh, what is a pulse? Pulse is the heart rate, the heartbeat. Tuk, 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 tuk. You can feel the heart pulse also one. So, you uh, go up to the neck, and then you go uh see whether it got pulse or not, see whether it got heartbeat or not. 
because it's impossible for you to just go go to the chest and say, do, 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 do. oh, go heartbeat. Maybe the heart is beating very, very soft and very, very slowly. Yeah, you can see from the pulse, but you cannot uh, hear it very, uh, you, can, you cannot hear it very clearly uh, from the environment. So after you check for breathing, there's uh, normally two outcomes. Uh, one of the outcome, outcome is no breathing and no pulse. So what do you do for no breathing and no pulse? You do CPR. And then the second, uh, the second situation is there is, uh, there is pulse. Basically, there is heartbeat. The heart is still beating, but there is no breathing. Basically, the lung is not, is not functioning anymore. So you do EAR. EAR is exo uh, uh, EAR is, EAR is, oh no, I need to do my religion. Oh shit, I'm going to get my right so bad. Okay, CPR. How do you do CPR? You do chest compression. Uh, CPR will be on uh, next class and you guys will learn. So stay tuned, lah, okay? Okay, uh, um, moving on, DRABC. Uh, moving on, I will let uh my I let uh another trainer take over and also uh, uh she read more lah. Okay, so let's continue with secondary survey. Okay, so uh as I mentioned mentioned just now, so the secondary survey got one formula is sample lah. Okay, so this is the best way for you all to remember what's, what's the secondary meaning. Okay, um, secondary survey, normally it will be used after you done for the primary survey. So let's say uh, you check for the, you check the primary survey, right? Right, like D-R-A-B. Once you, once you're done after the D-R-A-B, -D so you can proceed with this and also the C on C, uh, I mean, wait, yeah. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, uh, where I stop? Ah, so the secondary survey will, it will be used after the after you done for the primary survey, which is DRAB. Okay, so first will be sign and symptoms. Sign and symptoms uh means what you saw. Let's say the casualty uh got chest pain. So you uh you can see the drama lah. Okay, the drama normally the un the uncle suffer suffer for the heart attack. So the casualty will be. Hold like hold her chest, not hold like okay. Put her put his hand on the on his chest, then feel like oh, oh, very pain something. So not if you, let's say if you see the uncle do like that, oh, then you will think oh the uncle suffer for heart attack something like that okay. So this is the sign and symptoms. So the next will be allergies. So does the casualty have any allergies? Okay. So let's say uh my friend okay one of my friend. He's allergic to so uh if if my friends he take he take the he took the seafood as her as his meal as his meal so the casualty will be like very gata here gata day so this is one of the allergic okay so the next will be medication so uh let's say like uncle just like a like the uncle just now so if normally the heart attack patient they will have a medication. So the me medication I will show you later on. So uh, then the next will be past medical history. Uh, this one. So uh, how to say? Um, if the casualty is conscious, like the casualty never pengsan, uh, she he or she can respond to you. So you can ask the fellow, or oh, did you went for the surgery before, uh, or any past medical history? So uh, this one I a bit forget lah. Okay, so let's say if the casualty went for surgery before, then 
this time he pata again. So you have to like take take it more serious and treat the patient more gently. It means like you don't touch the you don't touch the you don't make the casualty feel like more pain on the on her wound something. Okay, so the next will be uh past medical history it means uh means let's say you treat a choking patient pay choking casualty now. So you ask the fellow, or oh, do you have any past medical history? Then the fellow say, oh, I got asthma, then GGAD. So you have to treat, you have to take it more serious because uh, choking plus asthma, this one quite serious. You, because uh, like you, you, you might cannot identify the sign and th symptoms very clearly. La, okay. So the next will be last meal. So uh, let's say like the uncle like uncle suffer for heart attack then you ask the uncle oh uncle just now you eat what ah oh i eat bakute then gg la bakute this one is quite fat food la okay so if the if the uncle eats bakute then heart attack some more wow this one also very serious okay so the next will be event history so you can ask if the fellow is conscious you can ask or oh, uncle what happened just now just now uh go who hit you uh who puku you uh or oh, then then where are you just now something like okay just talk, not talk not talk like not talk the story like okay just ask what's what has what's happening okay or you can ask the passerby okay so far understand So if you've got no question, I will proceed to next slide. Hey. Oh my. So this is the medication. So wait, yeah. Uh, so this medication, as you all can see, the insulin. The insulin is like a, it's like a injection. Normally, that normally the. Normally, the diabetic patient or diabetic patient will be using this to balance balance the insulin in his or her body. Okay, so this one you I will be teach in detail later on, but not not today after this la. Okay, so the next will be heart attack. This is heart attack. Got two medication la. The left one is it is called as GTN the glyceryl trinitrate and this one is for the aspirin this will be teach in detail soon okay so the next will be asthma this is the asthma medication got two also the left one is for is used for the emergency then the right one is used for like preventer la. so the right one the brown color can use many times then the left one only use at the emergency time okay so this uh allergic anaphylactic shock okay so let's skip the skip the head to toe examination so let's proceed to the vital sign so as you all can see can see your menu only got uh one two three only got four vital sign one is another extra one is capillary refill so this i will teach later on Okay, so let's continue with this. All right. So vital sign, the first one is pulse rate. Pulse rate, uh, this, this two, as you all can see here, the radial pulse and the carotid pulse, this two is quite common, quite common for us to, for us to use when we, when we manage a case. Like, okay, so the left one is radial pulse. Uh, as you all, as you all know that uh, during SEGAP time, teachers teachers will ask you to measure your pulse case. So this is the two ways for you all to measure your pulse case. So the left one is radial pulse. Radial pulse, you guys can measure yourself, okay? At the thumb that side, thumb that side, okay? So uh, normally radial pulse, it will be applied to a conscious casualty. So, uh, yes, you all can see the slide here, okay? Apply to a conscious casualty to to show to show them what are you doing. Let's say uh if la if la, okay, if you are a conscious conscious casualty, then I suddenly I I suddenly measure your radial pulse, which is the right one. 
then how you feel then you then you feel like oh my god why you touch me i don't want i don't want, i don't want. so radial pulse is much better for conscious casualty okay so the right one will be is the karyotype pulse karyotype pulse uh, apply to uh, unconscious casualty unconscious, unconscious casualty is a peng san casualty la, okay it is why we need to measure the karyotype pulse for the unconscious casualty because uh, it's located it's located near our heart okay so because uh let's say if the casualty is unconscious then you measure for the radial pulse it the radial pulse might not uh very consistent la, okay so karyotype pulse is the best way for the unconscious casualty so far understand if and if not then good la okay because uh online teaching is quite complicated for me yeah so the next will be by uh the pulse rate also yeah so this is the rate so you, as you can see the red colored red color words here this one very important because it might come up for your exam and also quiz later on please do memorize okay so i got mentioned down here brady means slow abnormally slow taki means at abnormally fast so taki you can imagine okay if the pulse or the pulse rate or the breathing rate like ta -ta, like very fast like ta -ta 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 -ta, oh then you remember oh it's taki okay then the brady means uh how to say brady brady uh how to give example like this one just leave it lah okay so you you taki means very fast brady means very slow okay ta -ta 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 -ta, means very fast okay so cardia means hard okay so this one i just go through but you have to memorize okay this is the normal rate okay the red color word is the normal rate okay let's proceed to respiratory rate and also uh which is your breathing rate so this one la uh, for the practical part, for the check breathing practical part, will be teach later on, but not now, because I don't know how to show you. Okay, so this is the breathing rate, and also please do remember this also. Okay, the normal rate. This will be come out for, for your exam also. If you all don't know, then God bless you. Okay, so and also like just now, Brady means abnormally slow, Taki means abnormally fast. Nia, this one Nia means your lungs. The the previous one is cardia means heart. Then then Nia means lungs. Okay. So the next. This one I just go through la. Okay. Vital sign. Okay. So the next the level of response. This one level of response you just need to remember this one avpu the g this one gc gcs this one is very it's also the same with the avpu but this one gcs it is teaching more detail la, very very detailed so normally the doctors the doctors or the paramedic or the first aider they will use gcs to identify a identify level of response of the casualty so avpu like it's like a how to say shortcut la shortcut 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 of the gcs okay so um, the level of response you can use uh you can apply do when you check for the, when you check one of the casualty so let's say alert alert let's say you hit the casualty shoulder and ask sir 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 are you okay uh wait up uh. Mm -hmm. so the this one avpu alert means uh awake la, okay so maybe like you when you approach to the casualty then the fuller can can how to say can respond to you la, okay so the next voice okay let's say you you touch the casualty sh shoulder the fella cannot respond to you. Then you shout. Then you scream. The fella, hello, wake up. Then the fella can respond. Means the means the casualty can respond to you. Means how to say like the casualty 
uh, verbal stimulation is okay. So the next will be pain. Okay, so let's say you scream, also no use. Then you, then you apply sternum rubs. Sternum rubs uh, is like, how to say, let me show you. Uh. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Uh. You guys know what is sternum or not? Stern sternum is located at your heart there. You you can you you will feel there's a very very hard bone there la, Okay, not hard bone la. Got one very like the uh, how to say very hard there with uh ah yeah ah sternum rams is like this. Tene. Ayo, pasta pasta. Now, as you all can see here, the sternum rub is something like this. You, you see the uncle, he, he used the, how to say, the tumbok ah, to gossok the casualty center of chest. You will feel very pain, very, very pain. Okay, so this is the stern, sternum rub. So let's say you apply the sternum rub to the casualty, then the casualty shout, oh, very pain, what are you doing? So it means the casualty also can respond to the pain stimulation. Then if AVP, these three also no use, ah, means the casualty is unrespond, no respond. Okay. So the next will be body temperature. Okay. If you, if your body temperature is below 36.5, means, uh, you got the, how to, got the, got the, and how to say the what? Wait, uh, means abnormal lah, Okay. L then if if your body temperature is more than thirty seven point four, means you having fever or high fever or may or maybe dengue fever ah. But better don't lah, Okay. Especially during this. So please do take care. All right. So the next, this one never mentioned in your manual. So this one very important. So this one you will be you will be used uh during bandaging. Bandaging will be used this. So please do remember. If you don't know, if you don't know this, then your exam confirm fail. So please do take it serious also. Okay. So vital sign. So this is the capillary refill. Okay, you can try to tekan your tekan your nails there. You can see or oh, it suddenly become white color, then become pink color. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. So let's say if let's say after you tekan your nails, after you press your for the nail bed, let's say uh let's say how to say uh it turns white like more than two seconds means very very slow very slow comebacks means uh it is abnormal okay means your blood circulatory blood circulatory not not good la okay so this one very important next okay treatment priorities this one like this treatment priorities is like the flow when you manage a case so the when you when you approach to one case so first you have to carry out primary survey DRAB. Okay, so this one you just need to this one just go through like okay because exam won't be coming out this also. Okay. So please do remember this the 4B breathing, bleeding, burn, bond. When you assess a case, you have to follow this step also. Uh this one is like a uh how to say uh like an injury la okay the injury flow the treatment the treatment flow la. so let's say you carry out primary survey okay d done a d r done a d a also done a d okay when you check for a suddenly uh oh a is okay la okay when you check for the breathing suddenly the casualty got no breathing and no power so you have to perform cpr first because breathing is more important than bleeding okay Okay, so let's say example okay. One casualty. Uh the fellow got no breathing and also and also uh you can see her her tight 
got many blurbs come out. So what you what you should do first, you have to perform CPR first as the breathing is more than uh, is uh, no no as the breathing is very important than bleeding. But the bleeding you have to depends uh, you have to depends also. Okay, so you have to perform breathing first, then see la. Okay. So the next will be control bleeding. Uh. This is the second. Uh, as you can compare here and there. Or bleeding here is the second step. Okay. After after you dance all your bleeding, uh, then you carry out secondary survey, the sample. If the casualty is conscious, then you can ask the fuller. Lah. Then if the casualty is unconscious, you can ask the passerby. If the passerby is uh is the casualty family or you can ask in more details about the name and age or that okay so the next the fourth one is treat large wound and burns are uh, also burns the third one and then immobilize bones and joint injuries okay then give treatment okay uh, this one uh, and also once you once you settle once once you settle all the treatment then you have to check for the check the vital sign uh like five minutes one time check check around one i know not five minutes maybe up it depends like okay if you're free then you check but you better check anytime because uh because uh, the vital sign can be like from normal become abnormal. So if the if the vital sign become abnormal, then you have to like you have to take it more serious also. Okay. Okay. So okay, uh wait. Uh, this is the example. Uh, this is the example. Okay. So first, when you see a situation like this, uh, you ignore this uncle. Like, okay? cannot ignore you imagine this uncle is you you are you are this uncle okay so first the so first the treat you follow the treatment priorities then you carry out primary survey so first i have to clear the danger first even though this this uh this kayu lah i call it i call it as kayu lah, okay never mind even let's say this even though this Caillou is a danger, because the FGO can see the snake is more dangerous. So you use the Caillou to clear the danger first, which is clear this snake. Uh, okay, ask the snake to go away. Uh, okay. But if you are if can you can call Bomba also. Call the Bomba to remove the snake also. Okay. So of, okay, after the danger is clear, then you throw this Caillou away. Then you approach to the casualty. Uh, then ask the then check for respond after you're done for the respond then check for airway then breathing if got if got breathing then perform cpr if don't have breathing then you treat the wound first you, as you all can see the the casualty hands here got two lobang two lobang here ah uh, means the 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 wounds is gonna the snake bite lah okay so you have to treat Okay, so it's something like this, okay. Okay, so after you done for the treatment, eh, not done for treatment, I uh, check for the bleeding, okay. Control the bleeding also, okay. Then you proceed to the secondary survey. Then you ask the passerby, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, then if everything done, then you call for ambulance, then send it to the ambulance. Yeah, that's all for this. Okay, then the next, okay. Making a call. Okay, so... This one I will teach you in detail because this one is quite important. Okay. Wait, yeah. Okay. So first when you're making a call, you, okay, you dial nine 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 and then connect to the nearest hospital. Let's say uh let's say uh you are live in Taman Sentosa, okay, which means which means you have to connect to the Taman Sentosa Hospital as nearest as you can. If cannot, don't don't suddenly uh like okay you stay in the Taman Sentosa. Then you suddenly call KL. Call KL for what? One hour, sir. So are you? Okay. So the next uh after you connect to the nearest hospital, then you introduce yourself. Now introduce yourself. You tell your name, your phone number, and your IC number. Okay. So after you introduce yourself, where's my mouth? Okay. After you introduce yourself, then you ask for the operator name. Uh, may I know who is on phone? Maybe uh uncle, uncle Johnny, uh Uncle Jason, uh any any fuller lah, okay? Okay, so the next will be uh, uh members, please mute. 
Shoot yourself. <laughs> yeah, right. I proceed. Okay. So after you ask for the operator name, then you proceed to incident address. Okay. Let's say my house. My house got uh let's say my grandmother fell down. Lah, okay. So I have to call the I have to call the ambulance lah, after eh, where's my mouse? Okay. After I done for the first three steps, then I have to tell my incident address. Okay. The incident address you have to tell the address lah, like uh twenty twenty three uh Jalan Dato blah 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 Taman Sentosa blah 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 everything. If can you can you can mention in detail also like oh the left hand side of the building is what the right hand side of the building is what okay so you can say like this okay so like my house my house in front of my house is basketball court then behind is a housing area lah okay something like this okay so the fifth one is type of emergency type of emergency I will tell you later what is the type of emergency lah okay so let's say uh like like i mentioned just now my grandmother fell down so this this type of case we will be we will call it as trauma case trauma means uh like not very serious case lah, okay it's like a normal case lah, okay so the next will be casualty condition okay so you can tell oh just now my ama fell down or fell down from second floor to the first floor then my ama got 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 sprains on her right ankle something ah uh, you can tell you can tell the casualty condition if can you can tell the casualty vital sign also like pulse rate or uh, you can say uh my ama pulse rate normal breathing rate normal everything normal uh so you have to come here blah 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 something lah okay so the seven you have to request for eta estimated time arrival after you done report these things which is one to six after you done for the done for this okay you have to ask the operator can i know can i know the eta the eta means like uh how much how much time how much time they will drive the ambulance ambulance from the hospital to your house okay okay so next type of emergency uh which is the fifth one the fifth one okay type of emergency as you all can see okay this one you guys cannot not it down can take not down okay so the first the trauma case trauma case is like like snake bite snake bite will be called it as trauma case then then the like normal like normal case uh, so, uh, got people fell now something uh, okay so the second one motor vehicle accident this one is quite it's like a kemalangan kemalangan di jalan raya okay so the motor vehicle and um, the motor vehicle as either the short form is mba mba okay so the next drowning case is means like someone fell into the sea then uh then suddenly pingsan uh this one we will we call it as drowning mm. case then explosion explosion like a chemical test yeah something like that then burning case burning case uh maybe like um mm, fire fire yeah something like that then suicide case ah uh, please don't do this ah uh. suicide case i have met a lot uh, in my school ah uh, so very dangerous uh, okay keep it simple okay take it simple okay take it easy all right then medical case medical case uh you all will be learn after this which is the emergency and medical emergency that part which is the heart attack angina blah 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 everything okay so the next is the casualty condition so uh wait uh, okay when you're making a call also have to report the casualty condition also the sixth one okay so casualty condition what you should what you should report so the first will be name if you know the further name then you can tell that if you don't know the further name then just Never mind lah, okay. So the next will be age. Uh, like my ama uh example lah, okay. 70 years old, uh my ama is tan tan abeng something lah like that. Okay. Male or female? My ama is female, not male. If male, if pondana, if pondana, uh if pondan this one, uh you can say 
I don't know lah. <laughs> but normally you you will know lah. Okay, you open the <laughs> hey, not open. Ah, cannot cannot. Okay, male or female, then conscious or unconscious, like my like ama like my ama fell down or so if the if the casualty got respond means conscious and respond no respond means unconscious. Okay, what serious wound on his or her body? This one you tell the serious wound enough. So let's say my ama got fracture. Fracture and also abrasion. Abrasion, eh, not abrasion, blah. the fracture is quite serious compared to the abrasion. So you all have to report the fracture instead of the, eh, yeah, instead of the abrasion wound. So report the serious wound enough. You don't tell, you don't tell, oh, the fella got cut here, something, oh, then no more edit. Uh, this one. You guys also can tell uh, depends on the situation. Let's say the casualty got many wounds on her body, so you have to tell the most serious one. Okay. So the next will be what you suspect on his or her condition. Suspects, you can how you all want to suspect. Uh suspects is like uh let's say the casualty it depends on the casualty sign and symptoms. So like the casualty uh his hands on his chest or oh, then uh then you can suspect the casualty got heart attack or something like okay all right next making a report so uh the report with yeah uh, ah normally the first aider or the ambulance people like okay they will use this use this form to report the casualty condition ah uh, so this one this is the example of the report, lah. Okay. So normally, what the report should write. Okay. So casualty name, age, age and gender. Ah, uh, this one very common, lah. The casualty past illness or medical history. Yeah. This. Uh, like a sample, the secondary survey. Then the next will be casualty condition. Casualty condition. Uh, yeah. Casualty condition. Uh, normally, normally the casualty report will be based on this one, the casualty condition. And also type of emergency also got la. Okay. Then um what and when you did to the casualty. Okay, so you guys also have to report what you have done, what you have done the done for the casualty. Like like the like example example you are assess a situation now uh the casualty got fracture okay then you're done for the fracture then you're done for the treatment for the break for the fracture lah, okay so you guys you guys have to report also if can you can report uh what you use uh, maybe uh i use the kayu to support the to support the casualty bond something like that ah uh. then you have to you have to mention the time Okay, so mention the time also. Okay, let's say the casualty suffer for snake bite. Normally, snake bite, you guys have to like, have to mention, not mention, have to use a marker pen or the pen to write, to write the time because uh, the doctor will be, will be checked for the casualty wound. Maybe like it will become bunk up some more. Yeah, something like that. I don't know what I say, but. I will try my best to explain to you all. Okay. So what and when you did to the casualty, yeah. Then and you also you guys also have to report the vital sign also. The vital sign you guys have to write uh the numbering, okay? Alright. So date, workplace location. This one uh, is the incident address, time, what time, what time you when you meet the case, okay, the DOB, this one DOB, oh, date of birth. If you know, then you write. If you don't know, then don't write. Okay, oh, you can you can check the casualty IC also, la, if you know the date of birth. birth. Okay, patient, family, name, if you don't know, then don't write. Uh, patient address, you can check for the IC also. Uh, telephone also got... Allergies, if you know, then you write. Don't know, then don't write. Uh, this one, I just go through. Lah, okay, This one, not in your syllabus. Yeah. What happened? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, this one. Okay. So, that's the 
end of the lesson. So far, got any question? So far, got any question?